Hi folks, welcome to episode 6 of the Art and Mental Health series. So I'm just going to continue reading out your comments. This is from Barbara Gemming. She says, thanks for the video, Steve. You were my very first inspiration for getting back to watercolour painting several years ago. Interesting what you said about getting frustrated over failures. I'll take the trophy here, I'm afraid. I wrongly presume that my painting will progress automatically over the years. The dissatisfaction demotivates me, not good. As you said, we learn by our mistakes. Um, something I mentioned earlier, as much as art does help with mental health, it can also create a lot of frustration when things don't quite go to plan. As Barbara says, you sort of automatically assume you're going to keep improving constantly, just at a steady rate. But it doesn't quite work like that. It tends to be ups and downs, ups and downs. Even though the general, the general trend, I think, is upwards with, with experience and practice, you, you, will, you will get better over time. But there will be a lot of frustrations. There will be a few mistakes. You must learn from them, learn from your mistakes and your failures. And you will get better and stronger as, as your painting progresses. Paul writes, painting, like gardening, focuses the mind on the moment. It puts you in the here and now, which is someone who has suffered with mental health issues. is very therapeutic. Yeah, as Paul says, I mentioned myself a lot of times, when, you, when you're painting, same as with gardening, whether you're planting something, whatever it is, you, your main focus is on that, and you tend to, it helps you forget about your day-to-day -day struggles. I think it's important to create your own little sanctuary, somewhere where you can just get away. Whatever your hobby is, whether it's painting, gardening, whatever it is, playing the piano, just somewhere where you can just get away from it all and practice what you love to do. Rob Southall writes, I know the lockdown was tough for many, but in a strange way, I'll always be grateful, it, grateful for it, as I'd never picked up a paintbrush until then. I was 54 at the time, and now I wish I'd started painting when I was younger. I'm also very grateful to you, Stephen, as your videos were some of the first I watched and attempted to paint. They were such an inspiration, and the hours spent watching them in lockdown definitely helped me through it and kept me on an even keel. Thank you. I think lockdown was an introduction to art for, for, for many people. It was amazing driving around city centres, and there was absolutely not a soul on the streets. It reminded me of. Um, the film 28 Days Later, where the streets of London are completely deserted, and that's, that's exactly what it was like. But this was like five o'clock rush hour. So obviously COVID was, wasn't, was a very bad thing, but it, it, there were, I suppose, one of the silver linings was people were introduced to these new hobbies and pastimes and, and discovered things that they never realised they, they loved doing. Sarah Jane writes, I don't throw away any reject paintings, but keep them in a scrapbook, and I like looking through it from time to time. Um, they get into the stage, some of the contents even being recognisable. I mentioned before, it's interesting to look at a lot of our old paintings, because then you will see, if you look at paintings from two, three, four, five years ago, you'll see the progression. So when you think that you're not getting anywhere and all these practices going to waste, look at your old work, and you'll def you'll see, you will see a progression, how you've improved your techniques. Deanie Firebird in, in, in episode 3 has written, thanks for continuing to highlight the benefits of art as therapy for mental health. Just an observation, the lockdowns were, in some ways, easy for those of us with mental health issues to cope with, particularly if, like me, you suffer social anxiety. It took away the pressure to be normal. We no longer needed to constantly mask our symptoms because choosing not to, be, not to socially interact became accepted. I still feel less of a freak or a weirdo now because my extreme introversion can be interpreted as health anxiety. I do appreciate it was a difficult time for many people though, I'm not making light of it. As a person with long term mental health issues, I can say that there is definitely less of a stigma attached now by comparison to how it was years ago. There seems to be far more awareness of mental health illness in society these days. There's still a long way to go but it's getting very much better. I now feel finally able to openly admit to having anxiety, depression, whereas in the past I wouldn't. It always had to be kept hidden. Thanks for playing your part by highlighting mental health in an art context. It's a vital therapy for so many of us. I think mental health, I remember when back to when I was at school um, and the way people used to take the mick and it was, it was horrible how cruel some kids can be. Um, there's definitely more of an awareness these days by some very high profile figures. Um, 
I'm, I'm pretty sure I think uh, Prince William, Prince Harry here in the UK have, have, have spoke about it quite frequently in recent years. So I hope it continues to improve and those suffering don't feel like freaks or weirdos and can sort of try and integrate more into society and become more accepting, just generally happier, live in a happier space. So I'll close this episode there. Um, thanks for listening again. I'll be back with episode seven very soon. I'll catch you later.